it's Zach, and today we're talking about Transformers. <laughs> no, not the robot kind. So enjoy, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell for more electronics videos. What is a transformer? A transformer is a device that either increases or decreases alternating current or AC voltage in a circuit or isolates the AC current from one circuit to another while keeping the same AC voltage from the first circuit. Before we talk about how to use them in a circuit, let's discuss how they work. The principles that govern how transformers work will enable you to understand many other elements of electronics. The first major principle to know is that when current goes through a conductor, such as a wire, it creates a magnetic field. However, in order for the magnetic field to be strong enough for electronics applications, the wire must be coiled. So far this explains why there are coils on the transformer, but it doesn't explain how it works. That requires a second principle called Faraday's Law that states that a voltage is induced on a conductor in a changing magnetic field. In a transformer, a voltage is produced on the secondary coil by the changing magnetic field produced by the primary coil. Because a changing magnetic field is required, transformers only work using AC current. If direct current, or DC, was used, then the magnetic field would remain constant and the transformer would not work because voltage would not be induced on the secondary coil except during the initial spike when the DC current is first introduced. The primary and secondary coils are wound around an iron core to strengthen the coil's magnetic field, but the transformer can have certain characteristics beyond that based on their core structure. The three main core structures are core type, shell type, and toroid type. The core type single phase transformer looks like a square with the primary coil on one side and the secondary coil on the other. However, it is actually made up of very thin L-shaped iron laminates that form a square when combined and a bobbin. Laminates are used to reduce the strength of eddy currents. An eddy current is created in a conductor by a varying magnetic field. By splitting the overall surface area into laminates, many weak eddy currents are created instead of one strong eddy current that is powerful enough to reduce the overall efficiency of the transformer. A polymer paste is brushed around the laminates to secure them so that there will be minimal efficiency losses due to vibrations. The bobbin is placed over the core to allow the winding of the primary coil. This is done to prevent the core from abrading the insulation on the primary coil and to enable faster winding. The core type three phase transformer looks like a rectangle with two empty squares inside them. However, they are made of laminates that look like an E and an I. Once the polymer paste is brushed around the laminates to secure them, the primary coil is wrapped around each leg. Then an insulator is wrapped around the primary coil and then the secondary coil is wrapped around the insulator. The insulator is included because without it, a short circuit could be created and the transformer would not work. Now on to shell type transformer cores. The single phase shell type is constructed in the exact same way as a three phase core type transformer due to the fact that it also uses E and I laminates. However, the primary coil is only wound around the center limb. Then, like the three phase core type transformer, an insulator is wrapped around the primary coil and the secondary coil is wound around the insulator. A three phase shell type transformer core is a rectangle with six empty squares inside them. These create three limbs that the primary and secondary coils wrap around. The three phase shell type windings operate in a similar way to three phase core type transformers because the primary coil wraps around the limb then an insulator wraps around the coil, and then the other coil wraps around the insulation. The last type of transformer core we will discuss is the toroid type. The toroid type is donut shaped and uses circular laminates to reduce eddy currents. After the polymer is brushed onto the transformer core, the primary coil is wrapped around it. 
then an insulator is wrapped around the primary and the secondary coil is wrapped around that. Now, when would you use each type of transformer? Toroid transformers are ideal for high frequency applications. Shell type and three phase core transformers are ideal for low frequency, high power applications such as power distribution and single phase core types while inefficient due to how far apart the primary and secondary coils are, are the cheapest to make. Now that we know how a transformer works and how it is constructed, we will now discuss why a transformer is used. Electronic devices require power to use. In the majority of cases, power must travel great distances to reach the outlet that provides power to your home or business. Power companies don't want to waste energy, so they try to transmit it as efficiently as possible. That's where transformers come into play. Power losses can be calculated by the current squared times the resistance of the transmission wire. Based on this, the majority of power loss from transmission is from current. So how do you reduce the transmission loss? This is done by increasing the voltage of the transmission using a transformer. The transformer takes the initial voltage and increases it. However, the power remains the same. Therefore, based on the equation power equals voltage times current, the current will decrease when the voltage increases. The reduction in current will enable more efficient power transmission. This leads to another question. How can you control how much the voltage is increased by the transformer? The answer is quite simple. The exact amount of voltage that increases is dependent on the turns ratio of the primary and the secondary transformer coils. This can best be explained by an example. Suppose a transformer has a primary coil with 100 windings and a secondary coil with 400 windings. This means that it has a turn ratio of 4. Then, when you add a voltage of 120 volts to the primary side, the secondary side will have a voltage of 480 volts. Then, if you want to decrease the voltage back down to a usable voltage after transmission, another transformer is used. Except, in this case, there will be more windings on the primary side than the secondary side. Let's do another example to explain this. Suppose a transformer has a primary coil with 400 windings and a secondary coil with 100 windings. This means it has a turn ratio of 1 fourth. Then when you add a voltage of 120 volts to the primary side, the secondary side will have a voltage of 30 volts. Now on to a quick design note. Make sure your transformer is rated for the input voltage. Too much or too little voltage will damage the transformer. A transformer that increases the voltage is called a step-up transformer, while a transformer that decreases the voltage is called a step-down transformer. Transformers use AC voltage, yet many electronics projects use DC voltage. So how do you convert from AC voltage to DC voltage? The answer to this lies in a full wave rectifier circuit. This circuit is explained in detail in my video, How Capacitors Work, but basically this circuit uses diodes and capacitors to convert alternating current to direct current. Before finishing the video, let's briefly discuss the isolation transformer. It is used to protect against electric shock, to suppress electrical noise in sensitive devices, or to transfer power between two circuits that must not be connected. In summary, transformers use the changing magnetic field created from alternating current to increase or decrease the voltage. Then the voltage is increased to enable more efficient power transmission using a step-up transformer and decreased to a usable voltage by a step-down transformer. Then the AC voltage can be converted to DC voltage using electronic components.